Please load faster, load faster. Come on, computer, load faster, load faster, load faster. Come on, computer, load faster. The first print. What is the question? Pen pendant name. She writes this book under a pen name. Why can't I speak English? So without further ado, I was gonna say I'll see you in my next video, but this is the beginning of the video, so. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Jay and I'm here with my May wrap up. I read a total of 13 books. So we should probably get into it so this video isn't 60 minutes long. So without further ado, let us get started. Wow. The first book I read this month was actually an ebook, so I'll put the picture now. And it is called Dearest Clementine by Lex Martin. And this book follows Clementine Avery, who's a 20-year-old college student who just had her heart broken by her high school sweetheart. Her mother just cut her off financially, so in order to help pay for her college tuition, she decides to write a book in her freshman year of college about her heartbreak in high school. She writes this book under a pen name so that nobody knows who she is and so she can write freely about her feelings and what happened. To make matters worse, Clementine was stalked by her freshman professor and this has left her bitter and she doesn't like letting anybody close to her. Her past experience has tainted her view on love and dating until she meets a boy named Gavin Murphy. It was a really fun read. I gave it three out of five stars. Gavin was my favorite part of the story. He's my new book boyfriend. He's awesome and I love him, so... Yep. The next book I picked up was Ignite by Lily Paradis. I have a review of this book and I will leave it linked down below and I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars. The third book that I picked up this month was Squall by Sean Costello. This book follows a pilot named Tom Stokes who lives with his wife Mandy and his 5 year old son Steve and they're also expecting another baby. One morning Tom is out flying his plane when a storm hits and he has to land unexpectedly. Unfortunately for him he does not land properly and he crashes into a house. He ends up crashing his plane literally into the lap of a criminal named Dale. He's immediately pulled into the life of a fugitive and this puts his wife and two kids in danger. It's basically the story of all that jazz. I really like this book. It was very fast paced and it was pretty easy to read. I read it in one day and I gave it three out of five stars on Goodreads. The next book I picked up this month is Billy by Anna Gavalda. Billy follows a young woman named Billy and her best friend Frank and when the story begins, they are stuck in the mountains in a gorge in Paris. When her friend no longer responds to her, she begins to tell the stars stories of how she and Frank met and how they escaped their troubled lifestyles. I did not like this book one bit. I gave it one out of five stars on Goodreads. Very, very slow paced and I found it extremely boring. I did finish it in a day, but it's very short. It's only like a hundred and something pages. Next I picked up Every You, Every Me by David Levithan. I'm not giving any synopsis of this book because it is way better when you go in blind and have no idea what's going on. With every single turn of the page, I found myself wanting to know more and more and more and more. And I wanted to know what happened to Ariel and where she went and it was just, it was so good. And I love how it has the strikeouts like in Shatter Me. Although I did predict a lot of the story, it was really entertaining and I give it 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Next I picked up Upside Down by Leah Riley. This book follows 21 year old university student Natalia Stolfi who is suffering from OCD. After her sister's death, Pippa, she feels like everything is falling apart and she decides that she is going to go study abroad for one year in Australia. While she's in Australia, she meets a boy named Bran Lockhart who is moody and sarcastic and pretty much a huge jerk. But the thing is, she can't stop thinking about him. The only thing is that he was burned in the past and he decided that he would never love anybody ever again until he meets Talia. This book was so funny. Talia is so witty and I found her comebacks so funny. The book is told in two points of view, Talia and Bran, except there's only three chapters with Bran. I really liked how their love wasn't an insta-love at all. It took them a long time for, to fall for each other, even though they were obviously attracted to each other right off the bat, but I'm definitely, definitely going to pick up Sideswipe. I gave this book three out of five stars on Goodreads. The next book I read this month is Vandal by Michael Simmons. This book follows Will, who's your average 16-year-old in a family of five. He has an older brother named Jason who, ever since he can remember, has been having trouble with his behavior. He's always being brought home by the police, 
and the only thing that him and Jason seem to have in common is the love for his little sister, Olivia. Will spends most of his time playing lead guitar in a cover band of Kiss, and when things finally start looking better for Jason, he does the unthinkable. I wanted this book to be a lot more heart-wrenching and emotional than it was. I found that Will's and his parents' reactions to Jason were a little unbelievable. They were just like, Oh, everything will be fine. He'll work it out himself. Like, he's been to juvie. If that doesn't change him, I don't think anything will, guys. Come on, like, snap to it. Like, figure figure this boy out. But I found that the characters were really one-dimensional, and there wasn't really any development whatsoever. And I gave this book a 2 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The next book I read was Warm Bodies by Isaac Marion. I absolutely love this book. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. It's about a boy who's not really a boy, he's a zombie, his name is R, and things are changing inside of him after he meets a girl named Julie. It's all about his journey as a zombie and how he's dealing with changes, and I just, I love this book so much. It was so good, and I highly, highly recommend it. The next book was Looks by Madeline George. This book follows Megan Ball and Amy Zorn who are both invisible in their own unique ways. Megan is obese and people pretend that she doesn't even exist, where Amy is extremely, extremely thin and she appears to disappear into herself. Megan begins to feel this strong connection with Amy and she wants to feel close to her, but Amy wants nothing to do with her, until a common enemy brings them together and they both want revenge. This book was so easy to read. I loved Megan and Amy. They both have such completely different personalities, which made the book so much better. And I really, really enjoyed it. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Next, I picked up Killing Brittany by Sean Olin. This book follows a girl named Brittany Johnson who has transformed herself a year after her mother's death. She is no longer the little nerd everyone once knew, and she has transformed herself into the fabulous hockey wife, as her group of friends call her, and she is now dating the star defenseman Ricky. But when Ricky tragically dies in a hit and run, her whole world seems to crash around her, and as more and more people around her start to die, she feels like she's next. The book was really interesting. I was able to figure out who the killer was after about halfway through the book, and I was flipping between two people the whole time until one detail came up which kind of made it obvious, but it was pretty good. I gave it 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The only problem I had with it was that there was absolutely no character development. The only character I really liked was Adam. The writing wasn't exactly the best, but it was really fast to read. I read it in one day. The next book I picked up was Leslie's Journal by Alan Stratton. I gave this book a 2 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It follows a girl named Leslie Johnson who is 15 years old and ever since her parents have separated, she's been mad at the world. The only person she can really trust is her best friend Katie until she meets a boy named Jason. Jason is new in town and he's a senior at her high school and he quickly becomes the center of her world and when she wants out of the relationship, Jason won't have it. This book was very creepy and disturbing. It was an extremely fast read and I couldn't put it down because I wanted to know what happened. I read it in one day. But, like, Leslie pissed me off so much. I don't know how she's so naive. I understand that she's only 15, but I mean, like, girl, come on, like, really? I did like how Leslie started to stand up for herself at the end, and she definitely went through a lot of character development, which made me like her a lot more in the end. The next book I picked up was The Perfect Mother by Nina Darden. I absolutely loved this book. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Jennifer Lewis is in her bed sleeping one night when she receives a call from Spain where her oldest daughter Emma is studying abroad saying that she is the prime suspect in a murder of a young Spanish boy. When Jennifer arrives in Spain she discovers that her perfect daughter isn't who she thought she was. This book follows Jennifer on her trip to Spain and her attempt to save her daughter from a lengthy jail sentence in a foreign country. I love this book. I found it so hard to put down. I found myself needing to know what happened next. The plot twist at the end was so incredible. I want the book to be longer or like give me a sequel, something. I need to know what happened. It's so good guys. Seriously, if you can, pick up this book. And the final book that I picked up this month was An Education Book One by Lucia Jordan. <laughs> follows Rachel Jackson who owns her own bookstore and her favorite customer Oliver always comes in to write his novel. When she discovers that he is writing an epic fantasy, she becomes very interested and when he leaves his rough draft on the table as he leaves, she can't help but take a look at it. She quickly discovers that this is not an epic fantasy and it's actually an erotic novel 
and she's very surprised to find that a lot of the aspects of the story resemble her and Oliver and she thinks that this is finally the chance that she can show Oliver how she really feels. It was literally just a porno. I found myself laughing through most of it. <laughs> it was so stupid. I just, uh, it was so stupid. The way the author described the sexual scenes and the words that she used to describe things were so funny. Like, I just, I couldn't. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. It was just, no. Don't read it. Just don't read it, guys. It was only 69 pages, so it was really, really short, but... It was ridiculous. <laughs> Alright guys, so that was my May wrap up. I read a total of 13 books. I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye! Anna Gadalda or Gavada? Gavalda? Billy by Anna Gavalda? Gavalda? And no, it's called Billy. Billy by Anna Gadalda? Gavalda? Why can't I do this? Billy by Anna Gav